Hi friends. So we are going to talk a little bit about being the narcissist emotional punching bag. In some cases, physical punching bag. Now, anything bad that happens to the narcissist throughout their day, no matter what it is, whether it's at work, something bad happened at work, um, they were stuck in traffic, um, somebody cut them off, um, no matter what it is, they had a stomach ache, like literally anything wrong or bad that happens to the narcissist, they take it out on you. And they say, oh, you know, people take things out on the ones that they love the most and that's the closest to them. I don't know about the love the most so much is maybe the ones that are closest to them, but it's misdirected rage and anger. We don't deserve it. We never deserve the punishment. And so, yes, we are their proverbial um, punching bag. They need somebody to unleash on and they know that they can unleash on you because they do it almost every day um, and you're still there like you haven't left you, you know maybe you don't have anywhere to go maybe people don't have anywhere to go and that's generally why one of the reasons why people stay as long as they do because you don't plan for it and so they know that they can come home and yell at you. They might even say, oh, I'm sorry, you know, I didn't mean to take it out on you. I didn't mean to take my day out on you. But it's like, okay, every day, a week, a month, a month, a year, six months, two years. I mean, it just goes on and on and on and it doesn't end. We were not put here to be, we're not supposed to be somebody's punching bag. Like, why would they want to hurt somebody so kind and sweet and somebody who's loving and nurturing and, you know, a good husband, a good wife, like, or, you know, maybe it's your parent or maybe it's, you know, a relative or your boss or whoever it is. It doesn't always have to be like an intimate relationship, but I mean, nine times out of 10, it is your spouse and it's not fair, you know, they, they need that. They need it to feed their, it's their supply, you know, they feel better. I literally think they feel better to see you cry or to know that, that you love them that much, you know, that it upsets you. They have that effect on you. The one thing that I recommend, if you're still in the relationship, if you can't leave, um, or even if you have left, or they left, and just gray rock, just go gray rock. Just answer like yes, no, okay. Don't let them get you in entangled in an argument because that's what they want to do. You know, they, they want to see you. And then when you get upset and you yell, then they're like, see, it's you. You're the one. You're the argumentative one. I'm just defending myself. I'm the victim. It is so mind blowing how they think. And they know, like they know that it's them. They know what they're doing. They're not stupid. They're actually pretty intelligent, most of them. I mean they hate silence they hate to be ignored that's why if you're with a toxic or narcissistic person and let's say you guys are separated or let's just say if they're calling you and they were yelling and you hung up and you're like i am not answering this call like i am not going to sit here at the other end of the phone and let them yell at me it pisses them off to no end when you hang up on them and then they'll call you back to back to back to back to back and you don't answer. Like that's one of the worst things that you can do to a narcissist um, to piss them off. Because they want you, they, they need somebody to, um, to feed them. They need, they need that supply to survive. So ignore them, go gray rock, silence, no contact for your health, for your sanity. 
So you're not their punching bag. If they want to throw a fit, a temper tantrum, because that's what they do, they're like children, they throw temper tantrums. And then, and then when they finally cool down, um, it's like nothing happened. It's like, oh, so what do you want to eat for dinner? And you're like, what the? What do I want to eat for dinner? Are you kidding me? I want to throw up right now. Like, what do you think you just did? Like, what do you think this is? You know, it's not a game. It's a game to them. It really is a game to them. Don't play the game. Don't play the game. Thank you so much for listening to my little rants, you guys. Um, leave me your comments and your questions and let me know what you guys think, what you're going through. You're not alone. Um, you deserve happiness. You deserve love. You deserve affection. You deserve so much more than the narcissist is uh, willing to give. And, you know, we always want what we can't have. And one day when you do finally get the courage to leave um, or you know, to make them leave or whatever it is, you know, stay strong, stay strong. Cause I mean, you have weak moments. I have weak moments where I'm just tired and I just don't want to fight anymore, you know, and that's what they're hoping for. You are not their punching bag. Let them be miserable by themselves to themselves. And you think about you make yourself happy. I love you guys. And you know what? You're loved by so many other people, you know, just try to appreciate and love the people who do support you. And I know that's easier said than done because when you're going through um, a, a relationship, a bad breakup or just a bad toxic relationship, you know, you can just have a million people around you and just feel so alone. And it's a very isolating feeling because people don't understand. They don't get it unless they've been there. Um, but the one thing that I can say is to ease the blow is it's better to be by yourself because you're alone and you know you're alone than to be with somebody who makes you feel alone. You could be sitting next to them and they make you feel like you're a million miles away, like you don't matter. Like you're just a piece of furniture and you are definitely not a piece of furniture and you're nobody's punching bag. Okay. You are nobody's punching bag. So stand up for yourself. You know, we can be classy, but we can also be a little hood because I can be a little hood. Okay. The Desiree back then, back in the day. Yeah. Every other word was the F word. And let me tell you, I did not let anybody push me around or, you know, call me names or whatever. Like I fought back and I don't recommend that you really get physical because that's not going to end good. We know this too well. So protect yourself, stay safe, um, you know, leave if you have to go park on the next block, you know, get it, just get away, get to a safe place, go to a family member's or a friend's house. If you have to just be safe, just stay safe. You guys, you know, it's all fun and games and it's all, Oh, let's watch this video. Let's do this video. But you know what? This is, this is serious. Like this is life or death in some situations because sometimes when the narcissist doesn't have anything left to lose, you need to be careful. Do not be left alone with them. If they lose their job or they, um, you know, they, it starts snowballing and these things, bad things start happening to them. I mean, if they have nothing to lose, you don't want to be in a situation where they're like, well, what do I have to lose, you know? And they're depressed they're just losing their mind. It's not safe. It's not safe. I love you guys so much and I'll see you in my next one.